Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be talking about some players that you guys should be letting your idiot league mates draft in 2024 fantasy football. In today's video, we'll be talking about four players that I am generally avoiding in my 2024 fantasy football drafts based upon their current ADPs. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into four players to let your idiot league mates draft in 2024 fantasy football. We begin with the first player to let your idiot league mates draft, and that is Stefan Diggs, wide receiver of the Houston Texans, current underdog fantasy ADP wide receiver 22 at pick 30.2. Now, when it comes to Stefan Diggs, do I believe that he is going to be a colossal bust this season and that he has no chance to finish around his ADP as the wide receiver 22? The answer to that question would be no. I do not believe that if you draft Stefan Diggs, he is this massive landmine that could end up sinking the battleship of your fantasy football team. But what I do believe is that in Houston, the upside is incredibly limited for Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs has been feasting the last couple of years in Buffalo as the main number one target on the team. I mean, if you're thinking about the weapons last year outside of Stefan Diggs at the wide receiver weapon, there wasn't much talent around him. Sure, they had Gabe Davis, who at his time in the limelight and has shown some flashes, but at the end of the day, it's not like Gabe Davis was really much competition for Diggs, it's not like any of the other weapons like Khalil Shakir were going to steal a large amount of volume. And now he has been transported from an offense where he was the clear undisputed wide receiver one onto an offense where I believe it is entirely possible that he ends up as the wide receiver number three in terms of targets. And I think that it to me is very clear that at the very least, he will not be the wide receiver one. So I think the most likely scenario is he ends up as the wide receiver three. The second most likely scenario is that he's the wide receiver two in targets. The most unlikely scenario is that he is the wide receiver number one in targets. Obviously, this is assuming that Tank Dell as well as Nico Collins are able to stay healthy. Nico Collins really popped off last season. He was a guy that I was telling everyone to draft and it paid off in a big way. Tank Dell had a great season last year and based upon how much CJ Stroud talks up Tank Dell, I think Tank Dell has a shot to be the wide receiver one in terms of targets on this team. So I think that leaves Stefan Diggs really as the odd man out in this wide receiver core. Now, due to the fact that the Houston Texans are going to be laying haymakers into their opponents, they're going to be in games that are high scoring the Rock'em Sock'em robots matchups where both teams are going back and forth tit for tat. And that's going to be great for the Houston Texans playmakers. That's going to be great for Stefan Diggs. So while he might end up as the wide receiver three, or if he ends up as the wide receiver two, I don't think he is going to be a complete and utter epic fail of huge proportions. But even if he doesn't end up as an epic fail, when I draft a wide receiver as the wide receiver 22, right, I'm thinking... This is a guy that has a chance to finish in the top 12. This is a guy that I could see if things go correct, maybe he could finish as a top 10. Maybe he could finish as a top 12 guy, or maybe he is a very high end wide receiver too, right? He's the wide receiver 13 or 14 with a bunch of games inside the top 12 at wide receiver. That's what you are looking for in the early rounds of fantasy football drafts when you are selecting a wide receiver. And to me, Stefan Diggs doesn't feel like he can do that unless he ends up having injuries to his opponents. So the only real way 
for me, where Stefan Diggs ends up as a humongous league winner, where he ends up smashing at ADP, I think that would require an injury to Nico Collins or Tank Dell. If he finishes as the wide receiver 22, where he's coming off the board, sure, he won't have completely fucking exploded your team, right? He wouldn't have completely ruined everything that you built, but he also wouldn't really be helping you out that much. We saw last year, once they switched offensive coordinators, that Stefan Diggs started to struggle. And we have also seen that the Houston Texans aren't in some huge money hole if things don't work out with Stefan Diggs, right? Based upon the contract, if you want to whip out the Magnus, the Magnuscope, if you want to whip out the microscope and look at his contract, this isn't some four-year deal, right? This isn't some deal that has Stefan Diggs linked to the Texans for a long period of time. This is a one-year, $22 million deal. Now, I would be going ballistic. I'd be ecstatic if someone wanted to give me $22 million for 17 games of my life. But at the end of the day, what that tells you is that they are not in for the long run with Stefan Diggs as of yet. So if he does end up as the wide receiver three, that isn't really all that crazy. Wide receiver 14 last year in PPR points per game, wide receiver nine in PPR. He had 160 targets, number six at wide receiver, 107 receptions, number six at wide receiver, 1,183 receiving yards, number 13, and eight total touchdowns, 11th. In terms of efficiency, no bueno for Mr. Diggs. 62nd in yards per target, 77th in yards per reception. He had six drops, ranking sixth at wide receiver, 51st in fantasy points per target, and 40th in route win rate. Am I saying that Stefan Diggs is washed? No, he is still a very solid wide receiver. But as the wide receiver 22 off the board with Hank Dell coming off the board later, I am just not going to be drafting Steph on digs at number two we got kenneth walker sir kenneth walker the third running back of the seattle seahawks underdog adp running back 16 at pick 67.2 my sentiment that i just made about digs is very similar to my sentiment about kenneth walker the third i believe that kenneth walker is a very solid running back right there are teams that would be ecstatic to have Kenneth Walker as the lead back. There are also teams that would be ecstatic to have Stefan Diggs be their wide receiver one. But at the end of the day, we need to understand the situation that these players are in. Kenneth Walker is on a team with a brand new head coach in old Mike McDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O, right? Mike McDonald is the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Mike McDonald is not linked with selecting Kenneth Walker. Now, I understand that also means that he is not linked with the selection of Zach Charbonnet in the second round of the 2023 NFL draft, but I do believe that Kenneth Walker isn't miles above a guy like Zach Charbonnet. He is not so much better to where this couldn't be a 55-45% snap split just in favor of Kenneth Walker, or maybe things flip around and it's a 55% to 45% split in favor of Zach Charbonnet. Now, assuming that Kenneth Walker is the lead back, which is my assumption right now, running back 16 feels like a very fine place for him to finish, right? If he finished right now, he's my running back 18 in my ranking. So I got him two spots lower. So again, you're not breaking the bank by drafting Kenneth Walker and he finishes as the RB 18 when you drafted him as the running back 17 or 16, but that is not what you should be looking for in your fantasy football draft. You're not looking to draft someone that is going to finish exactly where you drafted him. When you're drafting the running back 16, you are hoping that he finishes at the very least, bare minimum, as a top 12 running back. And when I have Kenneth Walker as the running back 18, when I feel as though the team 
could shift to using Zach Charbonnet more. And the fact that I feel that Zach Charbonnet and Kenneth Walker are pretty equal in terms of talent, why am I going to go out there and start targeting heavily drafting Kenneth Walker? Kenneth Walker was the RB19 last year in PPR, running back 20 in PPR points per game. He plays in 15 games, ranking 15th in carries, 19th in rushing yards, 35th in targets, 34th in receptions, 21st in receiving yards, and he scored nine total touchdowns, 12th. Kenneth Walker, watching him play, is basically going to give you a heart attack because this guy is boom or bust with every single carry. He is either going to run for 10 yards, juke a motherfucker out of his socks, hurdle over someone, stiff arm someone to Middle Earth, and get the 15 or 20 yards, right? Or he's going to run and get smushed like he's at the Jersey Shore house, right? It is either one or the other. He is not this consistent guy getting four and a half yards. A carry average 3.9 true yards per carry last season, 39th. He was second in juke rate, third in evaded tackle. So he can make guys miss. But again, it is all or nothing with Kenneth Walker. It is this huge burst of speed, this run where he's basically built like a fucking meatball and he runs someone over and he gets the 10 yards, right? It's either the huge run or nothing. It is all or nothing with Kenneth Walker. And with the fact that I think that Zach Charbonnet is a comparable level NFL talent, I am not taking Kenneth Walker as the running back 16. Now, if he ends up as like a top 12 running back, then I will be wrong. But I genuinely believe he's just going to finish somewhere from running back 16 to 20, and you will be happy that you didn't end up selecting him. Again, I don't think that Kenneth Walker is going to be so bad that you are crying yourself to sleep thinking, why? Why did I take Kenneth Walker? But I don't think that you're going to be thinking the other way. Like, oh, why didn't I draft Kenneth Walker? Because even if the Seattle Seahawks try to run the ball more, which I think they will do, I just don't see Kenneth Walker really breaking away and being the clear running back one on this team. At number three, we got Keon Coleman, wide receiver of the no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, underdog ADP wide receiver 46 at pick 75.9. Now, I understand that some people might say, Nick, once you get to the wide receiver 46 range, once you're past wide receiver 40 in this range, like go ahead and take whoever you want. And I understand that narrative. And I would fully agree with that narrative if Keon Coleman was going around other players that I think aren't great dart throws, aren't great upside plays. Going around players like Jackson Smith Najigba, right? Keon Coleman, wide receiver 46 on our dog fantasy. JSN, wide receiver 47. A guy out of the Ohio State University with crazy pedigree, Sure, it didn't pay off last year, but I really think it's going to pay off this season. I think the team is going to look to involve him a lot more. He's going to be a big part of the game plan this season. He's the wide receiver 47. We talked about him in yesterday's video. So check that out after you finish watching this video, right? Make sure you guys watch that video. Five players I can't stop drafting. He was one of them. After that, we got another player that I've talked about recently in my sleeper video. Jamison Williams, wide receiver 48. Sure, has he ever paid off? No, right? He has not paid off yet, but there's a lot of reason to believe that he could in Detroit based upon the rumblings from Dan Campbell and Jared Guff. Then we've got Cortland Sutton, wide receiver 49. I understand that nine-inch Bo Nix isn't necessarily the greatest quarterback to ever grace Earth, but I think Cortland Sutton being the wide receiver one in Denver makes a lot of sense to take him as the wide receiver 49. Then we got Rashid Shahid, another guy. I'm Shahid. Wide receiver, 53. I do not like Derek Carr at all, but I've recognized the upside that Shahid possesses. And then you have all of Keon Coleman's teammates going behind him like it's a fucking conga line. They are all going behind him. Khalil Shakira, Shakira, Curtis Samuel, MVS, Mac Hollins, Chase Claypool. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend that MVS, Mac Hollins, Chase Claypool are the next Megatron, they're the next Randy Moss, they're the next whoever you want to say, the next Brandon Ayuk, whichever great wide receiver you want to say, the next Stefan Diggs, the next 
Tyreek Hill, the next Jalen Waddle, right? I don't think those guys are that. MVS is just fast, right? But at the end of the day, I would rather just wait and take Khalil Shakir, a guy who I've seen at the NFL level, who is not considered a raw prospect. While Keon Coleman is this real funny guy, there's a lot of clips about Keon Coleman that makes you want to like him, right? I am a Miami Dolphins fan, so I dislike the Buffalo Bills, right? I just inherently do not like them. They kick the shit out of us every single year, and it makes me cry myself to sleep. But at the end of the day, Keon Coleman seems like a very likable guy. It's just like Josh Allen. Josh Allen, very likable, very funny. Keon Coleman, same thing. But you don't get fantasy points or how much their draft interview makes you laugh. You just don't. That's not how fantasy football works. You get points for the receptions, the yards, the touchdowns, and Keon Coleman being a raw prospect who has never been a target hog. He's not sucking in targets like his name was Riley Reed out there, right? That's not what he did at college. Transferred from Michigan State to Florida State in 2023, playing in 12 games as a 20-year-old. Young, 50 receptions on 90 targets for 658 yards, 13.2 yards per reception, 11 touchdowns. Can Keon Coleman play football? Yes. Could Keon Coleman develop into this great player in the future, the next wide receiver, one in Buffalo for Josh Allen? And this could be someone that we are talking up next season, right? Maybe he finishes the season strong. Maybe he has a solid last three games and you picked him up off the waiver wire. yippee ki right? But as we are sitting right now with Khalil Shakir coming later, with Curtis Samuel coming later, why in the fuck would I draft Keon Coleman? A guy who is unanimously considered a raw prospect, a guy that needs to be molded by the offense, by the coaches. He needs to be turned into a more consistent player, okay? So this isn't a hate piece on Keon Coleman. I like Keon Coleman. Again, he's very funny, and I think he's skilled. But what I'm going to tell you is that it is certifiably insane to draft him ahead of Khalil Shakir, ahead of Curtis Samuel. I just don't get it. And again, when you can get JSN, Jamison Williams, Cortland Sutton behind him, I am never going to be drafting Keon Coleman. Sure, if you're drafting 150 best ball mania entries on underdog fantasy, go right ahead and draft them a couple of times, right? But if you're a normal person doing three, maybe just one league or five leagues, right? A very normal amount of fantasy football leagues. To me, I'm just not taking the risk. I'm not biting the apple. I'm not sipping the Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. On Keon Coleman. Before we get on into the final player to let your idiot league mates draft, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Now, we mentioned Underdog Fantasy a couple of times in today's video. If you are new to Underdog Fantasy, you can claim your special pick plus up to $250 if you are a first time depositor using promo code Notorious or by clicking on the link in the video description. We are going to be doing live best ball drafts on this channel all summer long. If you have never played best ball before, it is the best part about fantasy football. It's the draft. You don't have to set your lineup throughout the season, and there are huge prizes on there. There are tournaments for as low entry fee as $3. There's going to be tournaments with entry fees of up to $500 to $1,000. Their main tournament, $25 enter, over $1 million to first place. If you like fantasy football, you want to prepare for your real fantasy football at home league, make sure you draft on Underdog Fantasy is a great way to prepare and you could potentially win some money on there as well. So claim your special pick plus up to $250 if you're a first-time depositor using promo code Notorious or by clicking on the link in the video description. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy for keeping the metaphorical lights on at Notorious Fantasy. Even though the lights are off in these videos, we're keeping it. It's Nick at night, baby. At number four, we got Cole Komet, tight end of the Chicago Bears, Underdog ADP, tight end 16 at pick 145.3. Now, some people are going to be thinking, Nick, how can you avoid someone going this late? Nick, he's not even a top 12 tight end in ADP. How can you say that you can't draft him? What I will tell you right now is you shouldn't be drafting a backup tight end. So you shouldn't even have to worry about Cole Komet. But there are going to be people that will talk themselves into Cole Komet because of Caleb Williams, because they are in love with the new look Chicago Bears offense. 
And they will also talk themselves into Cole Komet because Cole Komet is incredibly underrated. So I'm going to sit here and give him some metaphorical fellatio here, right? I'm going to tickle the balls of Cole Komet metaphorically here because I think Cole Komet is incredibly underrated. In efficiency, he's fourth in dominator rating at tight end, fifth in fantasy points per target, seventh in fantasy points per outrun, fifth in expected points added. All things that are incredibly positive considering his starting quarterbacks were Tyson, Bajent, or Justin Fields. Great performance for Cole Komet with not the best quarterback options. And now you slide in a quarterback that has crazy upside. Now, am I going to say that Caleb Williams is going to turn the whole NFL upside down, change the Bears from being a bottom feeder to his great team in year number one? Of course, I'm not going to say that. We've seen quarterbacks take a while to develop, and we've seen quarterbacks that we really like just end up being nothing short of a straight-up fucking bust. But what I'm going to tell you is that I think that Caleb Williams is better than those other guys, and that will help out Komet. Problem is, while he finishes the tight end 8 last year in PPR, tight end 8 in PPR points per game tied with Trey McBride, despite the fact that he was 8th in targets, 7th in receptions, ninth in receiving yards, and 2nd in total touchdowns at the tight end position across the National Football League, problem is, now it's not DJ Moore and Darnell, here comes the money, and Tyler, Francis, Scott Key, and Amon Ross St. Brown's brother, Equiminius. Equiminius, I, I don't remember how to pronounce his name, sorry. Um... Apologize for that. But what I will tell you, Equimenius, maybe. Or is that like what you are? A squarian? Uh, squarian? Equitarian? Is that what it is when you like um, ride horses? Whatever. Equimenius, St. Brown. Bunch of fucking bums, right? Around DJ Moore and Cole Komet. Now, they have DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Rome Adunze, and they have DeAndre Swift. So... Now Cole Komet isn't like this huge red zone weapon because you have fucking Keenan Allen, DJ Moore. You can dump the ball off to Swift. You can run the ball with Swift. You can throw the ball to Roma Dunze. So now Cole Komet has essentially been... Any upside he has has been basically squeezed out of him like a fucking orange, right? He has been squeezed of all value. Is he going to have a couple of fine games? Yes. But as the tight end 16, with other guys going later that I think just have way more upside, way less competition, I am not drafting Cole Komet at all. Like, on Underdog Fantasy, where you actually do want to draft two tight ends, you might even want to draft three tight ends, right? Because on your bye week, you can't just cut some rando off your bench and add them and play your tight end. Or if your tight end gets hurt, you can't put them on the IR and pick up someone new, right? You're drafting, there's no roster management after so people might draft Cole Komet in those leagues. I'm just not going to. I think he's a great player. I think he could have a couple of good games. But with so much target competition around him, I don't see a reason to draft him. I really don't. Again, great player in a different situation. You throw this guy on a different offense. I'm all for it. But in Chicago with, again, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Roman Dunze, Swift, there's, there's just really no reason to draft him so thank you guys all so much for watching if you did up enjoying today's video make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure you leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter or x please do so at notorious fntsy check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already i love you guys all so much we'll be back tomorrow with another banger of a video i love you guys as always have a great one good boy.